If you're like me, then you realize that bikes are super expensive and you may feel like your dream bike is completely out of your reach. Well, not anymore. Today we're gonna to talk about how you can get your dream bike by shopping on the used market. Hey guys, Josh here again with Daily Mountain Bike Rider. And today I wanna to talk all about how you can get a great deal on a used bike. Some of you may not realize I'm actually a huge fan of used bikes, so much so that my Transition Sentinel I have right here that I've used in a bunch of my recent videos is one that I actually bought used. The reason I love used bikes is because bikes are super expensive. Not all of us have a ton of money to spend on high inspect bikes and you can save a bunch of change and yet not sacrifice any quality to get them. But along with that comes a lot of worry of, am I getting a good deal for the price? Is buying a used bike gonna cost me more problems in the long term? And really, what do you look for when you're buying a used bike? So here are my top tips on how to find a great deal on a used bike. All right, my first tip for buying a used bike is a simple one, but it's super important. And that is to set up a clear budget in your mind. A lot of times when you start looking online for bikes, you usually find bikes that look like this in the 100, 200, or even $300 price range, and you feel like you have to spend so much more to get a good bike. Plan a budget, stick with it, and use that to narrow down your search results so you don't have to go through tons and tons of listings of low-end bikes that are older like this or super high-end bikes. My second tip after setting aside a budget is to do some research on how far your money will take you as far as the bike goes. What typically happens is people get into mountain biking, set a couple hundred dollars aside, and then start looking at the highest end spec bikes and wonder why they can't afford them. It's always good to have a realistic expectations of what kind of bike you can buy for your money. For instance, my friend Sammy set aside $500 recently and was looking at hardtails or this used full suspension bike that he decided to pick up. This bike has some great parts on it. It was a really cool bike, you know, five, six, seven years ago, and it's still a good bike, but comes at a much lower price thing, and I think he got it for around three or $400. Moving up from there, maybe you set aside $900 and you can get a couple year old full suspension bike or a hard sail like my sinker back here. And last but not least, once you get up to about the $15 to $1,600 price range, you can start looking at one to two year old full suspension bikes like I just picked up for my friend Jeff. This is a 2018 Giant Trance 2. Definitely has a lot of wear in it, but he picked this up for just about $1,500, which is a great bike that doesn't need a bunch of upgrading, but may need some maintenance involved in it. The third tip may seem like an odd one, but it's find good timing for when you're gonna buy a used bike. Over the years, I found there's two good times to buy a used bike because there's a ton out on the market. And that is the beginning of the mountain bike season, which is about April, May, and the end of the mountain bike season, which is about September, October. During these times, this is when people are offloading their bikes to buy a new one, or it's the end of the season, so there's a bunch of closeout deals, so they got a great deal and they just wanna earn some cash back from their last bike. Now, if you're in the middle of the mountain bike season or it's in the middle of the winter when there aren't as many bikes available, that's totally fine, but just realize something. More bikes on the market mean people are more likely to bargain with you because they see all the good deals floating around them. But when it's a dead season and there aren't as many bikes out there, sellers typically realize that since they haven't had as much interest, they may stick to their guns and keep prices a little bit higher. All right, so you've got a budget, you've figured out what kind of bike you should be looking for, and you understand the time of year for buying a bike. And the fourth tip is quite a wide net, but I think it's actually really important when you think about it, and that's to start shopping and ask your friends for help. You know, if you're looking for a used bike, it never hurts to get a second opinion. Whether you're new to the mountain bike world or you've been mountain biking for a while, friends can give you great insights on what type of components or bike standards or things to be looking for for your used bike. I love when friends come to me and I tell them, hey, you should look for boost spacing or a dropper seat post or an air fork or not a three by drivetrain. And those little tips help them to narrow down their search or let them know what bikes they can pass along to me to give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Other things you can do is do your research by going to local bike shops. It's good to look at what current model bikes have spec'd on them and compare them to the used bikes you're looking at. As well, you can look at some year-end closeout deals or maybe bikes from a couple years ago that the bike shop still has and see how the prices online compare to what they're selling in a store. But really, you can't undervalue the time that it takes to research 
what type of bike you should be looking for, what type of standards you want, and what price those should reflect online. All right, so you've done your research, you've probably looked at a couple bikes, and now you've found the one that you want to buy. Tip number six is negotiate the price based on the maintenance that a bike needs. Buying things used, it's all about wheeling and dealing and having conversations and asking for a lower price. But here's what I found with bikes. If you can find some maintenance things that need to be done on the bike, that is the best way to negotiate down the price. This bike that I found for my buddy Jeff, the Giant Trance, started at $2,000. After going and looking at the bike, I saw that the brakes needed to be bled, that the chain needed to be replaced, and possibly the cassette. I saw that general service needed to be done across the board and that there was a couple of things that either needed to get replaced or clean. And because of that, I was able to knock hundreds of dollars off the price. When you come prepared, knowing how much services cost at your local bike shop, you can explain to people, hey, I wanna pay the price you posted, but because the bike doesn't work perfectly, I feel like you need to give me a better deal to compensate for that. And don't be afraid to ask to spend a little bit less money. Being honest with your budget or just telling people, hey, I'd love to save $50 for X, Y, or Z is the best way to get a deal because we're human beings. <laughs> we wanna interact with each other. And to be honest, I wanna help people out when I'm selling a used bike because I know they're buying something that they're gonna have a ton of fun with. And last but not least, once you get your new used bike, enjoy it. There's nothing like jumping on a new bike, making it your own, making little tweaks, and getting it to run perfectly. And I think it's so easy to think about the next bike you wanna buy or the fact that your bike isn't as cool as the next person's, but just enjoy what you have and realize it's not about how great your bike is, it's about the fact you have one and you get out there and enjoy the trails. Overall though, those are just a couple of my tips for buying a used bike. And I just wanna say here, buying a used bike is difficult. It's hard to find the best deal. It's hard to make sure you have all the best components. And the truth is you're gonna mess up and you're gonna overlook something, but realize that that's okay. And that no matter how much money you spend, you still have a bike that you can ride and it's still gonna hold its value after you've ridden it and you can sell it and move on to another bike one day soon. All right, that's it for me, Josh. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys have any questions about used bikes or anything else that you feel like I missed in this video and make, should make a follow-up video on, just leave a comment down below. I would love to answer that. Along with that, if you love my videos in the channel, consider supporting me on Patreon for two bucks a month. There's a link down below. And last but not least, click like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the videos I post and encourage me to keep posting more. All right, that's it for me. You know what time it is. Don't spend too much time listening to a guy talk about used bikes in his garage, but get out there, ride your bike, make sure you do it every day.